met her in the fall. He took her to a movie, and when they done it all, he took her. Hello, welcome to the Fabulous Picture Show. I'm Amanda Palmer. For this week's Q and A, we're joined by Andres File, whose film, if not us, who asks the question of what turns people into political radicals. Ohne den Führer hätte es sich doch gar nicht gegeben. If not us, who gets into the psyche of those characters who took Germany's 60s radicalism to violent extremes? In our Q&A, the director admits to sharing the central trait of those in his film, because at heart, he is... It's a very tragic German character, you know. You said it, not me. <laughs> also on the show... Ah! Vincent Gallo unleashes his inner animal to portray a CIA prisoner escaping a thorough renditioning. But first, Egypt's political revolution has come at the same time as a revolution in filmmaking, and we check out three of Egypt's first independent films. <laughs> The success of the Egyptian revolution was its inclusiveness. It brought together men and women, secular and religious, as well as independent filmmakers. Even before the revolution, a new generation of directors armed with cheap cameras were tackling Egypt's previously taboo topics. Six, seven, eight tells the story of three women living in Cairo. One of them is about uh, a woman, a poor woman who drives, the, uh, takes the bus to work every single day, and every single day she gets she gets harassed. The uh, second girl is a stand-up comedian which is a true story that happened the first girl that filed a case against uh, a sexual harasser in Egypt. The third one is uh, the highest, the, a higher class uh, girl who's been sexual harassed in a match. Her regular Arab sophisticated doctor husband uh, doesn't want to, he can't look at her anymore. When the three lives collide and under a lot of pressure, they start going to the extreme and they start stabbing men in the groins. <laughs> Our community condemns women if they said anything. So this needed a man to be credible. If it was a woman in the Middle East talking about women, she wouldn't have much, as, much as, uh, as much credibility. But some topics are even harder to talk about. <laughs> Egyptian-American Hesham Isawi slips into the slums of Cairo. <laughs> to tell the story of a relationship between a Muslim boy and a Christian girl. The censor rejected the whole core of the story when he said they don't want to have her as a Coptic. They should take any religious reference from the story and change her to a Muslim. Why? Because it's a very sensitive subject nowadays in Egypt. Christians are very much part of Egypt, really. And it's important to have them. And also have them with their problems. One of the things when I went back to Egypt after all these years, there is one word everybody was saying, from rich to poor. I mean, I'm suffocated. The dream is to leave, to get out, to where it doesn't matter. Just get out. After several years away from home, <laughs> Microphone's lead chooses to return to Egypt to discover its underground band. Inspired by an 18-year-old, 
Ahmed Abdallah originally wanted to make a documentary on Egypt's graffiti artists. And bit by bit, I found myself through her involved in the underground music art scene in Alexandria. <laughs> The script is a result of a workshop. 90% of the actors you see in the film are real people and they are retelling the real stories. And I met a lot of bands. Um, uh, I met first Mascara Band, the band of heavy metal band, but they are all girls. <laughs> heavy metal is totally forbidden in, in, in Egypt. I believe our film really helped the girls personally. Now their family are, are trying to accept the idea that their girls are playing heavy metal. Uh, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to make even small changes among the community we are dealing with, and these small changes will be able, bit by bit, to make bigger changes. He's made films all over the world, but back on home turf, the world's third most famous Polish director has made one of his best films yet. <laughs> An enemy fighter is captured by American forces. He's put on a rendition flight to a covert site in Poland. There is a secret military airstrip called Szymany, where those CIA planes supposedly landed, and the, and the, and the prisoners were driven into the secret black site called Stare Kiekuty. In real life, this site was located near the home of director Jesze Skolomowski. One mm, winter night on the forest road, I suddenly start slipping and I really nearly roll over and fell down the slope. So if something like that happened to the convoy, and for example, the prison wagon will roll down, one could have had a realistic chance to escape. As does the prisoner, played by Vincent Gallo. Turning into the wild animal by the, the necessity of, 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 of saving his life by any cost, you know, even killing everybody around. Although he's constantly on screen, barely a word is uttered by Gallo. Ah! He's a notoriously intense performer who puts the odd in method. I notice certain characteristic animalistic m movements of his body when he walks, and I thought that could be good for the part. He rang me and said, this is fantastic. I must be in it. I want to be in it. I am from Buffalo. It's always cold, you know. I can, I can run barefoot in the snow easily. They said, fine, listen, if you're serious, if you would be considering making it, start to grow your beard and the hair right now. So oh, my my hair grows so quickly, <laughs> you know, everything was so enthusiastic. I said, okay, do it. <laughs> Vincent is a method actor. So you know what it is. It gets to his head that that he's the character he's playing and he was turning people against him just to get the energy of, you know, fighting everybody, <laughs> being angry all the time, being upset all the time. <laughs> no, suddenly he said, tomorrow for, for breakfast I must have berries. We said, Vincent, it's impossible to get berries. We'll bring it from the nearest uh, civilized place, which actually was Vienna or, or, or something like that, but it took us 48 hours, you know. So two days later, he got the berries and he said, no, I'm not eating it, no, no. So then the whole crew was eating <laughs> berries. What do you think, you bloody stereo? 
down and behave yourself. Go on, look at it, look at it. In such classics as Deep End Sit down, and Moonlighting, Skolomowski took us inside the heads of loners and outsiders. Most of my main characters in my movies are the outsiders. In a way, I am one of them. I stutter quite badly as a child. That childhood, you know, of a handicapped... Uh, 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 child was something which really took me away away from people the strain and being outsider is the part of my of my own character therefore no wonder that I that I turn into into portraying such such people and with essential killings, Golomovsky portrays the one man against the world concept at its most elemental. This is a modern, brutal fairy tale. As, as our life is, you know, as, as what you see what's going on around the world. <laughs> our contemporary world is a, is a brutal fairy tale. everybody, welcome to this fabulous picture show screening of If Not Us Who, please welcome the filmmaker here. This is Andrus File. <laughs> Many of you might know that Andrus has been making documentaries for 20 years. So this is a departure. Why now? Most of the people I was trying to ask them to be part in a documentary about the issue, they are not willing to be uh, part in the film, in a, in a documentary film. They said, well, I have a problem to talk about these intimate issues of love, of relationship, or they said, I'm not willing to talk about the terrorist aspects uh, of my sister or whatever. So I decided to collect all the footage, the material, the interviews, and then I wrote a screenplay, and that was the reason. Based on the actual events in an ultra-conservative post-war West Germany. If not us, who is the study of radical politics? For a short moment uh, in these years, in January 1968, there was the idea of, well, we can change the world. If not us, who? It was a moment of a new oxygen. The, the windows were opened, and now we can really build up a new society. Not only a fight against imperialism, uh, but also to create some sort of world revolution. The recent film, The Beta Meinhof Complex, emphasized the violent actions of those urban guerrillas. Also known as the Red Army Faction. And drew criticism for glamorizing them. But Andres Weil's first dramatic feature is far more thoughtful. My father wanted no children. The Führer had sich Nachwuchs gewünscht. Weil reveals a complex spectrum of circumstance and psychosis. Hast du dich eigentlich mal gefragt, was dein Vater wirklich getan hat? That resulted in the radicalization of two key figures of Germany's new left. Ich schreibe so, wie wenn man mit der Faust in die Fresse der Gesellschaft haut. <laughs> Bernhard Vesper, an ambitious student and son of a notorious Nazi poet. Bis ein Schriftsteller wie ich. Struggles with the burden of his father's dying wish. Du bist der Einzige, dem ich das zutraue. To republish his poetic propaganda. And Gudrun Eslin is the daughter of a church minister who enlisted in the army despite his moral objections. Dann erklär mir doch mal, warum ich Mama zwei Jahre weggegeben hat zu dieser scheiß Amme. Wegen dir. They move to West Berlin to start a family and aid the leftist political elite. Der Frau treu bleiben, die Partei wechseln, SPD. <laughs> and set up a radical publishing house. Bernd, wir sind doch mit unseren Flugschriften ganz klar der Motor der neuen Opposition. But fermenting revolution from the front line puts a strain on their relationship. We must more than books. First, a new consciousness be created. To break out of the spirit of literature. Yeah? 
Sag mal, warum musst du eigentlich deine scheiß moralische Überlegenheit immer so vor dir hertragen? And when Gudrun meets the cocky, charismatic Andres Vader, she's drawn to his energy. Was bist du denn für ein blöder Arsch? With her politics and his passion, no. they make plans for violent revolution. Lass es uns besser machen, besser als alles, was war und was kommt. Na, uns kommt sowieso nichts mehr. They turn outlaw, leaving Bernvard alone with his books. Felix. And his baby. How many of you knew about this part of German history before coming? Hands up. Give me a And how many of you had, had heard of the RAF? This in Germany, Andres has been telling me, has been a very controversial film. You have definitely divided your audiences, and perhaps you can tell us why. It's a typical reaction uh, in countries with terrorism that you have two sides. One side says, well, terrorists are just killers. A killer is a killer, full stop. There's no under way to understand it, because understanding means justification. And the other part, uh, Uh, more the left-wing people who say, well, uh, there's a longing, a yearning for idols, uh, for heroes. Well, you certainly don't have any heroes mm -hmm. in this film. I don't think anyone walked away saying, hurrah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, that's uh, for me also a challenge because people in cinemas uh, special, they, they, they want to have clear heroes. Uh, most films are done like this, well, A plus B plus C, uh, and then you have result D. And we all know uh, life is much more complex. I come from the Knast, you understand? And there was the language that the dogs understand. There you don't talk about resistance. Then you give it to the face. Who is that? Eingreifen bedeutet eben nicht, nicht zugelaufen. Geht noch in die Lehre bei uns. Demonstrationsverbote zu unterlaufen. Other documentaries had tried to capture the profiles and portraits of these people, but you were always interested in not so much the actions, which many fi films had focused on, but the motivations. I think you have to understand uh, politics by going into these very intimate situations, to connect both the very private moments and the political moments, and to understand something about the engines, about the strength uh, of love, but also the strength of uh, radicalization. Andreas and I fahren weg. Wenn wir zurückkommen, wohne ich hier nicht mehr. Und wohin geht's? Nach Frankfurt. Für wie lange? Open End, wir werden da was machen. I knew the characters before and I've seen like the Bader Meinhof complex as well. And I remember the debates about iconizing or not and all these things. So I thought it was really nice that it wasn't iconizing in this one. For me it was uh, an interesting work with the actors because uh, they, they always said Uh, well, give us more footage, show us how good one was, for example. And I always said, just because I wanted to get, get it away from the icons, from the photos, uh, from the film footage that exists from Gudrun, I said, no, we have to find our own truth. <laughs> uns nicht so schwer. Warum? Warum jetzt? Weil wir was gecheckt haben. Reden ohne Handeln geht nicht. Well, they certainly saw themselves as part of an international movement, didn't they? They thought that they were part of a, a larger consciousness. Yeah, in the 60s, it was the clear idea of a, of a world. Here's the enemy, the uh, imperialistic capitalist country, and here are the liberation movements. We have the right to us now and safely on a period of time to prepare, but we are already in the practice. This definitely has timeliness where we're seeing what's happened in the Middle East again with, with the student protests and people demanding for change. It must have certainly added a whole layer of dis interesting debate to this yeah. film. In Germany there was a survey in 1967. Students were asked, well, uh, it came out, they are unpolitical, they are only interested in their career, that's it. And five months later, hundred thousands were in the streets and nobody expected that. I was in Egypt uh, two years before and I, I made a, uh, some sort of workshop uh, at the film school. And uh, everybody was so intimidated by censorship. <coughs> and uh, of course we were talking about, is there a chance to escape? Mm -hmm. And everybody said, yes, we want, but there is no chance. What is the lesson out of it? That uh, even if you look into history, you don't know when the point comes up I'm fed up, uh, fed up with it. I want to change something. Yeah. 
Ich werde hier gebraucht. Wenn du es mit Felix nicht schaffst, dann musst du ihn weggeben. For her to essentially abandon her child it had major political impact on the way she took her life and her radicalism, didn't it? Mm. It's a full of pain for her, the decision to give up the child. And on the other hand, there must be a big project. It couldn't be uh, to improve the situation of the workers by fighting for higher salaries. It must be the world revolution. Wo ist Gudrun? Kann ich nicht sagen. Felix was put in a foster home, obviously. So yeah. did you did you find him? Have you ever spoken to him? Yeah. I knew I couldn't make a film without him or against him. So mm -hmm. the first step was to convince him because uh, for me it's an open heart surgery to show, to make a film on his situation and he will be confronted with his parents who gave him up and yeah. committed suicide. And I uh, had shivers up my spine. Yeah. And uh, I knew it's very, very hard. So we had a lot of conversations. And after a couple of months, he said, uh, Andres, you are the one, the only one. I can imagine, well, you have to do the film. Sag mal, siehst du nicht, was hier los ist? Komm, jetzt kümmer du dich mal um Felix. I'm just curious, what does Felix think about his parents today? It's a tightrope walk for him. To not to condemn his parents, uh, trying to understand, but at the same time to escape and to define his life beyond the shadow of the parents. We have a new project. Text from the US Widerstand, Black Panther. Can you translate that? I can. Hi. Hi. Yeah. You gonna make a comedy next, Andres? No, I'm not a of able Come on. to. No, no, I'm, I'm not able <laughs> to do comedies. <laughs> you so might I'm a very tragic you know, German character, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Can we please thank this very tragic German character, <laughs> Andres Bar? Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> Sag mal, hast du keinen anderen zum <laughs> gefunden? Kleiner Tipp, schreib ein Buch drüber. Soll er helfen? There's just days to go till Cannes, the world's biggest film festival, where glamour, commerce and high art collide. Directors famously edit right up to their opening night, but a few swaps have done their homework early. I met a boy. Really? Yeah, I met him at Chris's memorial. I know you. Does anybody here know you? It was kind of different. Most of the festival's favourite auteurs are back this year, including Gus Van Sant, with teen depression romp Restless. Make her better. I don't think you understand. Make her better! You'll be grown before that tree is tall. It's all stars ever in the tree of life from revered enigma Terence Malick. Come on, hit me. Hit me. Come on, son. What star is that? The red one. I don't know. And the auteur's auteur, Trixie Dane Lars von Trier, premieres Melancholia. Life is only on Earth. And not for long. I don't think you know that. Well, that's it for this a fabulous picture show, and it was fabulously tragic. Thanks to you. Yeah, and I will <laughs> stick to all the tragedies. I will make a film about the financial crisis, and it will be also some sort of Shakespeare drama. Maybe in the very end it will be also a comedy. We will see. I don't think so. <laughs> es gibt sieben Welten Angst. Ich habe sie alle gesehen. On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate this film? Eight and a half. I would say eight. Yeah. It was a very powerful film. Very kind of stark. I was quite astounded by the sheer callousness of some of the characters. It gave me an understanding of the struggles that people of that era had to go through to come over the terms of what had happened 20 or 30 years before. Mm -hmm.